On this episode, we talk with Michael, an equestrian strength and rehab coach. He's been working with equestrians for over three years, and he gives us some tips and tricks on what parts of our body we need to be aware of while we're riding and what parts of our body we need to work out when we're off the horse. Yeah, and he stresses the importance of how your body is just as important as the horse is. So enjoy. This podcast is brought to you by Ram Horse Fencing and Stalls, the one-stop shop for your horse farm. Ram is family-owned and operated and has been in business for over 30 years. We welcome you to call in and speak with an expert about your next project today at 866-653-8984. Again, that's 866-653-8984. Welcome to Late Night Riders. I'm Gretchen, and I'm joined by Lucas and Michael. Michael, can you tell us a little bit about how you got started working with equestrians and fitness? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so about 12 years ago, I actually started in a in a dance background. I was a professional dancer in Los Angeles, California. And I did that for about six years until I fractured my back. And uh, it, took, it made me step away from the dance world. And I decided that I had loved fitness and health my whole life. And that I would jump into that because I didn't know if I'd be able to ever dance again. So um, I went back into my first audition after I got uh, recovered from my back injury. And I was like, nope, I'm done with this. Um, and so I dove completely into the fitness world. And uh, I originally just started people helping people with losing weight and wanting to get stronger. Um, and then I dove into this world of uh, what's called muscle activation techniques. And it's this specialized technique to help people rehabilitate and to be able to use their bodies and restore the function of their bodies to recover from injuries or to um, optimize how they use their bodies. So I started a business in Fresno, California. And about three years ago, a trainer, a dressage trainer came in to work with me and she had had back issues herself. Uh, so I could relate on that. And uh, her career was at a point where she might have had to have surgery and she would never have been able to ride or train again. And so we worked together and got her out of being able to, or out of having to go into a surgery. And she's actually now in Chicago competing um, for the nationals, I believe. Um, and so my experience with her led her to just telling all of her riders and exposing what we had done um, to the equestrian world. And as of today, I work primarily with all equestrian riders um, in person and online. So it just kind of came at me and I grabbed a hold of it and ran with it. Now, had you done anything with horses prior or was this just, you just jumped in? No, I had never, I had never done anything prior with horses. Uh, all I knew of the equestrian world is that I had an aunt that used to jump and I would see uh, a picture of her jumping a horse every time I went over to her house. So that was my experience <laughs> with horses before. Yeah. So did you have to research a lot once you like started getting to know equestrians and figuring out like what muscles and stuff that they were using while they were riding? Yeah, yeah. It was a combination of, uh, I kind of geek out on anything that I dive into. Um, I, I don't just do it half-heartedly. I fully immerse myself. So I went down the road of a lot of research, but um, the one thing that really helped me um, get a good grasp of what went on within the rider's own body was having these three trainers that I work with on a daily basis. And I would just ask them questions and questions and questions. So my knowledge of how the body works and being able to hear their uh, knowledge and always be getting information from them. Um, the two of those for the past three years has led me to getting into conversations that I'm like, how do I know all this stuff about the horse world now? This is a mind blowing from going from nowhere to just way more knowledge than I ever thought I would have. So now how long have you been in the equine niche specific uh, rehab now? Yeah, so for about three years now. Yeah, three yep. years total, pretty much just primarily on the equine world. Um, have you came up with like your own routines or like uh, classes for them? Yeah, so um, not not quite my own. I well, I'll say this. Yes, I approach the each equine client in a very similar manner. Um, there's no specific name for a modality that I've come up with. Mm -hmm. Probably in the future, because I believe the power of what I've been able to do with my clients to see them um, be able to have the success they had. 
Uh, I would like to be able to teach that to others down the road because um, I'm kind of capped with what I can do with a person and even with working with people online. Um, so I think it would definitely be something that in the future um, I will make more official and uh, yeah. So what do you believe horse riders should be doing out of the saddle um, to get the most when they are in the saddle? Yeah, yeah. So um, horse athletes in general, I believe, and I, I, I would definitely consider anybody who rides a horse um, an athlete. It takes a whole lot to not only control your own body, but control that of a much bigger horse body. Um, needs to be doing work off the saddle. And I think before even diving into what to do, um, I kind of would like to help shift the culture of the horse riding community of what glimpse I've gotten, which is you spend all this time and money into doing things for your horse and taking care of your horse and it's got 25 specialists for it. Um, and then you, you don't leave any time or make any time for yourself to take care of yourself out of the saddle. And you kind of walk around with a badge of honor of being, you know, hurt and you don't have time to take care of this. So first of all, I think it's so important for anybody to just do something for themselves um, out of the saddle. Um, any athlete and dressage riders, jumpers, whatever it is you do in the equestrian world um, to do something. So I'd kind of like to make a shift of really helping people focus on make time for yourself because your horse will um, benefit from it greatly. And also you'll have longevity in the sport as well because you'll be able to take care of your own body. Now, when it comes to what to do, my whole approach um, is getting the most out of yourself. And that most is an acronym, it's M-O-S-T, M for mobility. So improving your mobility, which just basically means improving your ability to control your body. Some people call it flexibility, um, but I believe mobility comes from the control aspect. So can you control your body symmetrically from side to side, or are you collapsed on one side? Are you having struggle moving a hip on one side? So being able to restore mobility and be able to move, and that also helps with pain too. The better you can move, less pain you have. Then the O is gonna be orchestration. So can you orchestrate your body in a very specific way? Can I move my leg in a certain way without getting my spine involved? Um, the more clearly you can orchestrate your movement, the more clearly you'll be able to give aids and control yourself on the horse. Um, and then the S stands for strength. The strength is gonna help you have endurance while you're riding so you don't get fatigued, so you can have the skills um, that you need while you're riding throughout a long day when you're competing. And then strength in general, just to protect your joints and bones so that way you can do it as you age without slowing down. And then last is the T, which is gonna be for training and time because without actually doing training or putting the time set aside, nothing's gonna happen. Um, so the combination of those three things with the time being the one that's gonna wrap them all together. So how, how much time should someone be spending outside of their horse uh, working on themselves, say, per week? Yeah, yeah, that's that's very that's, that's a great question. And um, I will say it is going to be dependent on what level they're coming into this at. Um, but I typically require two to three days of mm -hmm. some sort of work. And so um, with the people that I work with, um, that I work remotely with, so they're in another location. I have them do starting off one mobility day, then they do one stability day, which is gonna be that orchestration part, working on being able to control stuff, and then one strength day. So they're doing three um, workouts a week that typically last 30 to 45 minutes. One of them's at home, two times in the gym, so maybe a total of a little over two hours in a week that you're setting aside for yourself. And so do you send them, um, like, do you create workouts specifically for them and then send them to them? And um, are you Skyping with them? Or are you on the phone? How does that work if they're more remote clients? Yeah, so I actually have an, uh, an app that I work through. And so each client uh, goes to the gym and they open up their app and it's got their workout for the day. And that workout will have maybe five or six exercises. Each of those exercises is a video of me explaining how to do the exercise in depth, making sure like I'm your personal trainer there. You watch the video and then you can go through it. And I have the explanation of how you're gonna do your workout. So that is gonna be on their phone when they walk into the gym. And then we meet once a week on a call like this. Um, and I work with about 10 to 12 riders at a time. So it's a small little community that we jump on a group call. And that way I can go over, you know, how was your week? Um, what are you gonna do this week? Do you have any questions for me? 
And then within those calls, they can also get a hold of me through a messenger service on the app that they use for their training. That's really cool. So what is yeah, your client thanks. base like? Is it older, like an older generation or is it like very widespread? Yeah, um, my, it, actually my in-person and my remote business is pretty much the same. It, it's about probably 40 to 65 is my average client somewhere along those and every once in a while i'll get the younger client um, that comes in but i typically found that it shifts towards the older demographic because of two things one um, you've been through a battle already so your body um, is gonna be in a different place where you may have these pains and injuries and then you get to start then then you're at a part of your life as well where things are starting to get taken away from you. Like, oh, this isn't as easy as it once was. Oh, um, I, I have this glimpse of something down the road making it very hard for me to do what I love to do, which is ride your horse. And that's the whole point of my business is to allow people to do what they love for as long as possible, as well as possible. So it tends to shift towards that older demographic. Now, do you feel like the younger demographic should start now? And so that they're, they're not trying to do it later when they've been injured or like trying to recover from whatever Ab yeah absolutely wholeheartedly i believe that and um i think that message is a little bit as um you can take for granted you think everything's okay because you don't feel any negative sensation you don't have this pain so you're like yeah i feel great why would i need to do this i'm you know i'm young um and so 100 percent would be beneficial and for the long term um, it's just harder to persuade someone to do something preventatively as opposed to having someone be forced to do it reactively. Right. Has there been like a specific region that you're finding on like people's bodies that over time is getting worn away more frequently, like maybe their backs or something? Yeah, um, it's pretty common for me to see back, lower back issues as well as hip issues. Um, and that has to do with just getting on the horse in general. Um, so not to go too far in the, into anatomy, but your hips, when they move away from your body, we're gonna call that abduction, moving out to the side. In your hip joint, you only get about 30 degrees of this motion on each side. And so if you could imagine what like 45 degrees would look like, that would be here from my hips and 30 is only about here. So you're not gonna get on a horse with just 30 degrees of this which means your body has to do these extra things by rotating your hips out and extending your lower back to get your legs into that position, which means you're constantly putting a lot of um, pressure and um, kind of jamming some of that hip stuff as well as the lower back. It's asking a lot and putting it in positions that are not natural mm -hmm. and over a long period of time without the correct abdominal core hip strength and stability, those giant, those joints can get worn down for sure. So if you have, like, if you don't exercise at all, but you're an equestrian, what are some simple mm -hmm. things that they can start doing to at least help prevent some of those injuries? Hmm. If you're, so if you're not exercising currently, mm -hmm. what are some things that you can do? Um, I would say, first of all, bringing an awareness to what your body feels like. Um, I feel like this is very similar with running. It's something that you do and you get these pains and aches and you just uh, maybe not even acknowledge them, but you just say, okay, well, that's a part of it. Um, and so just bringing an awareness to that, hey, there is something negatively going on in the body and maybe it's okay to dial it down a bit or to just step off 20 to 30 minutes early um, and so if I'm not going to exercise, I would say changing the mindset a little bit of not pushing through pain and being aware of when things aren't feeling so great or tight. So you reach the point where you like realize you need to start exercising. What are some yeah. like easy things that you can start doing, even if it's like 15 minutes a day to like start that process? Okay. This is a this is a very tough question to answer because I never like to give like a whole approach because each person is different and each body is different. And I think that's where we get go wrong in the fitness industry a lot is prescribing the same thing to everybody when there's everybody's completely different. But I can I could potentially say that there are areas of the body that I would look at as a horse rider, and that is gonna be your abdominals. 
So your abdominals ability to flex what we would think of as like a, a sit up motion um, and then being able to rotate. So there's different exercises that you can um, either go research on your own that um, are going to move your abdominals through that range of motion. And then um, at the end of this too, um, I, I actually offer something that's a seven day to a connected core challenge where I, where I give five different exercises um, for exactly who you're saying right yeah. now, if you wanted to start something. Um, so I can make that available to anybody um, and give you that information as well. Um, but those areas that I would focus on would definitely be your trunk so your abdominals your your back and then your hips um and that's where i would focus that's where typically i spend a lot of my time with people to build a solid foundation um but to give an exercise i don't think there's one best exercise for each person yeah so what do you believe um it takes in the long run to ride at these high levels that people do yeah um i believe in the long term um exercise should be a part of your routine um, forever. Um, and that's what I tell each one of my clients when they come into me, they're like, so how long would this take? I'm like, how does the rest of your life sound? They're like, <laughs> taking back for a second. But I believe it to be true that it should be a part of your life um, throughout your entire life to make sure that these mu the muscles that you're using to move you, the joints that you use to move you all can be in the best shape that they can be possible. Doesn't mean you have to go to the gym five days a week um, but just keeping a maintenance on this stuff is detrimental to um, being able to do and ride uh, for a long time without letting your quality suffer or just the, your own pain tolerance suffer. Yeah, I think a common theme that we've heard from a lot of our podcasting people are if you're expecting your horse to be an athlete, you need to also be an athlete and spend time on yourself. And I think that's what you're also saying. Which Absolutely. Really awesome. One hundred percent. So what are ways like if people want to actually contact you from our podcast, how can we find you? How can we follow you? And um, what is the seven day challenge information? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> I have uh, most of my information I put out is on uh, Facebook uh, on Rider Remedy is my uh, name on there. Um, and I also am on Instagram. So Facebook, Instagram or YouTube. If you type in Rider Remedy. Um, I'll be there. I'm just more most active and post most of my videos on Facebook. Um, and then just if you're on Facebook, the easiest way to contact me is just shoot me over a message and um, I will send you over that that PDF um, that's got all those exercises and that challenge um, in the future in the soon in the near future, um, I'll be posting it uh, onto my website as well. Um, but for right now, just reach out and I'll send it to you um, as well as my um, email, which is Michael at I think And uh, either way, you can contact me and I'll make sure you get that. Awesome. So what's next for you? What's next for me? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, so just as of recently, I jumped into the virtual world to be able to help more people because I can no longer take clients in person. So my the next thing for me is going to be how can I get this knowledge that I have out to as many people as possible. Um, and so that's something that I'm currently working on to expand this community and kind of push the idea of making sure you take care of yourself. Um, and then being able to get people to take action, the ones that are may be ready to make sure that they get the best um, program for them. But then also those ones that have constantly told themselves they're not uh, they don't have the time or they're too old to do something to start to change that mindset. So just this huge spread of information and knowledge and then being there for people when they're ready to have the best program design for people that want to ride horses and stay strong and stay healthy. Now, is this challenge for everybody? Someone say who hasn't started yet? Yep. It is. It is the first step that I would have anybody take because it focuses solely on improving your mobility and your ability to use your muscles. So just taking a step back, in order for any of us to move, including our horses, um, we have to send these signals constantly to our muscles that say contract, right? And that's how we function. This is gonna be a way for you to reestablish that connection and make that connection stronger. So you have the ability to restore motion in your own body. And that is the first step I would have anybody take is getting better control of their own muscular system before throwing a bunch of weights at them. 
That's awesome advice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right. Thank you so much for podcasting with us and taking the time out of your day. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Appreciate it. We hope you enjoyed listening to our podcast and encourage you to share with all your equestrian family and friends. You can tune into the Late Night Riders podcast show every Friday night. Each episode will be uploaded exclusively on YouTube, where you can subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with all of our latest shows. Do you have a topic you'd like to discuss? We want to hear from you. You may email us at podcast at ramfence.com or feel free to leave a comment below. Thank you again for listening. Thank you, Michael. Thanks, Michael. Thank you.